21 Dungeon Part 7 Using her Rift Warp, Alice appeared in front of the Queen as Seth used Shout taking advantage of the fact he can just hold aggro while running around without being hit. Letting loose and spinning her scythe Alice landed hit after hit slowly chipping away at the queen as she was forced to try to engage Seth. Jumping up with her one good leg Alice lands on top of the queen lowering her blade below the queen's neck. Time to die, Alice said as she pulled the blade hard against the queen's neck and throws herself to the side using the scythe to swing around the queen slowly cutting away at the queen's neck as blood starts to spill and fly in a circle as Alice continued swinging around her neck until the queen fell onto her hands cobalt queen level 15, weakened. HP 200 slash 32 comma 000 MP 800 slash 17 comma 000 skill Blizzard landing back on the queen's shoulders Alice yanked her scythe up hard causing he head of the queen to fall from her shoulders as her body hit the ground lifelessly title quest queen one fifth make five boss monsters kneel to you before you kill them like hell I want to go through this much trouble again you damn system Alice thought slightly annoyed at the system's timing with a random quest However she was quite curious what kind of skill or ability would come from having such a title. I, I'm really happy you're alive, and I am sorry having you go through that almost all alone. I understand if you want to find another party, Seth said not able to look her in the eyes. Relax I don't plan on leaving the party because of something as small as this. I could have done more to help sooner but I didn't want to reveal all of my cards to you guys. Alice said patting Seth on the shoulder as she sat down trying to relax a little bit. Seeing that the boss was dead, the other party members came out of the forest and repeatedly apologized to Alice, assuring them that it isn't a problem and that they only made the logical decision. Well since we have all had time to rest and recover from the battle we should go ahead and head to the exit portal. Once we exit we can head back to town to sell all the loot and split it. Seth said helping Alice stand up. We should go celebrate the success at the tavern. Nikita said with excitement. I am so down to celebrate, Nira said with a slight laugh. I think I'll join you guys before I head back to the Mages Guild to train some more. I may try to pick up training with a bow so I can be of more help when I can't use my magic. Derek said still remembering being pretty useless during this dungeon. Well, let's get going, Alice said as she led the way to the exit underscore 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 and hey you me, I am back from the dungeon and I brought my party so we can sell our loot. Seth will also be needing new equipment since all of his got wrecked. Alice said surprising Yumi who did not see them come in. Alice, you're finally back yay. Yumi said as she tackled Alice giving her a hug. Must be nice to be loved, Shadow said jumping on top of the two to join in on the fun. Seeing Yumi hug and play with Alice, Derek couldn't help but feel jealous as he continued to stare at the two. Hey now, it is not nice to stare you know, what will you do if Alice notices and turns her gaze on you? Seth said jokingly as Derek shivered remembering what that gaze felt like. Good looking out, Derek replied. So. For all of the weapons, armor, and hide you guys have I can pay a total of 1350 silver, Yumi said setting the big bag of silver on the table. Thank will be great thank you, said said as he gave everyone their share, 270 silver, dot. I will meet you guys at the tavern I plan on looking at other armor if that okay, Alice said as the rest of the group headed to the tavern leaving Alice and Yumi alone. New armor already? What kind of armor do you need? Yumi questioned. I. Just wanted to see if you have anything better than what I have currently, Alice said looking around. I mean I have armor that is of better quality but to be honest you won't find another armor set in this kingdom like the one you have on. With the stat buff it gives the wearer it is already better than the other armor in my shop. Yumi said sitting with her legs crossed and her back leaning against her table. Then, why did you sell it to me so cheap? Shouldn't it be worth at least double what your best armor is worth? Alice questioned trying to think of any possible reason she would let something so valuable go for a small price of 9 silver. I just had a feeling that the armor wouldn't fit or help anyone as much as it would for you, not to mention you look super attractive wearing it. Yumi said smiling wanting Alice to take the compliment. Alice was never really one to have a relationship but she could clearly see that Yumi liked her. Thank you, I'll have to repay you sometime in the future. Alice said not really sure what else to say. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. How about you join my party, I will be closing up the shop soon and heading to another kingdom with a lot higher level monsters. Honestly I could use your help getting there. 
plus the kingdom of Samaria has a ton of clothing shops so we could go shopping more, she said with eyes full of hope. I don't see why not, I have reasons of my own for wanting to become stronger and if the monsters over there are stronger then it is the perfect place for me to go to achieve my goals. Alice said expecting a big reaction. I guess this is goodbye then. Wait you said yes? Yumi said completely shocked the only thing she thought of was her saying no and this being the last time she got to see her. Yup, I want to get stronger and if you're going someplace where I can become stronger I want to go, Alice said as she walked out the door leaving Yumi to daydream underscore 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 at the table with the rest of the party as they all drank and had fun, Alice contemplated how to let them know she was going to be leaving the kingdom without making them feel like it was their fault for abandoning her. Any clue how I should break it to them shadow? Alice asked while taking a big drink they left you for dead even I would have come to your aid if I could but I would have held you back. If you ask me just get up leave and don't even give them the honor of letting them know you're leaving, Shadow said coldly, still angry at the lot of them for leaving his master to fight and almost die alone sigh, I don't blame them and I had fun together being with them so I should at last tell them. Alice said staring at her mug, Alice, hello are you there? Derek said waving his hand in front of her face. Oh, sorry I was just thinking about something, Alice said without emotion. We were just talking about taking on a easier dungeon and getting better at our teamwork and maybe having some battle practices out in the forest to tone up our teamwork, Derek said slightly drunk and slurring. That sounds nice, but I have something I have to tell all of you. I am leaving for the Kingdom of Samaria with Yumi very soon, it has nothing to do with you guys. Yumi says there are stronger monsters there and asked me to join her party. I have my own reasons for striving to be stronger and I don't think I can't reach my goals if I stay in this kingdom. So this is both a celebration and a goodbye, Alice said looking at the group before drinking the rest of her beer. Hearing this Derek stood up and simply said uh, I am sorry. As he left the tavern with a miserable looking face. I think Derek probably just needs some time to accept your decision, Seth said getting up to go after Derek. Is it really because of that? Nira said feeling guilty again for what happened in the dungeon. It is, she replied while reaching over taking Nira's hand. I really don't blame you guys, so don't feel guilty okay? Fine but please promise you will talk to Derek and sort things out with him so he isn't a mess later, Nira said as she to drank the rest of her beer believing Alice underscore 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 said her goodbyes and talking things out with Derek, Alice packed up her belonging and headed to Yumi's shop. You made it? Yumi said giving Alice another hug still overjoyed that she said yes. You. All packed up and ready? Yumi said putting Alice's bag in the carriage. Yes but how in the world can you afford to travel to another kingdom in this? Alice said genuinely curious as something like this is normally only used by families with a ton of money or high status. Well. Let me fully introduce myself my full name is, Yumi Kim Astala the third daughter of the Astala family in Kingdom Samaria. Yumi said slightly bowing before getting in the carriage and reaching her hand out for Alice to take dot grabbing Yumi's hand and sitting on the soft cushioning Alice couldn't help but be impressed riding off in a carriage made from such high quality material, the inside of the carriage even had light stones to keep it illuminated during the night without the need for a torch. So are you royalty or what? Alice couldn't help but ask. My father was a businessman and helped the kingdom stabilize their economy so much that they have never in history been as stable as they are right now. So the king granted my father the title of duke, Yumi said proudly. So, did you run a shop in this kingdom for so long if you have life made over there? Alice questioned again. Because I wanted to prove to my dad that I could run a business successfully, he doubted me and I proved him wrong so now it's time to go back and start my life back over, Yumi said while looking out the window. How far away is your kingdom from here? Alice said pulling up her mini-map trying to see the two kingdoms to try to figure out a way to judge distance using the mini-map. Probably about five days give or take it's been a few years since I have been back, it will also depend on if we encounter any issues along the way. While petting Shadow Alice brings up her status window to use her level up from the system quest. Name, Alice class, Fallen Demi Angel title, Hunter HP, 395-395, 420-420, MP. 515 slash 515, 540 slash 540, level, 13 STR, 4550 plus 10 VIT, 
50 plus 5 int, 70 90 plus 5 dax, 2730, plus 10 plus 5, def, 2630, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10, agi, 40 48, plus 5 plus 10, skill points, 30 0 skills, familiar, telepathy, blessed by god, passive, demonic gaze. Finishing her level up, Alice starts to feel a little better about having to fight a stronger monster if she needs to. Wake me up if anything happens, Alice says to Shadow as she starts to nod off. 22 Journey to Samaria Alice? Come on your father is waiting on you, today is the day you try out for the Royal Guard. Alice's mom said as she held her hand and flew bringing Alice with her. Dad, I made it, I hope I am not late. Alice said landing beside her father giving him a hug before saluting him. I have told you countless times to call me general while at the palace, do you even want to be part of the guard silly girl? Her father said patting her head and giving a warm smile. Yes, of course I do, she said smiling happily, this is the day she gets a chance to show her father all of her hard work and hopefully join him as a member of the royal guard to defend against all invaders. Good, join the rest of the recruits in line so we can get things started. He said sternly no longer smiling. Listen, up everyone, today you will be proving if you are worthy of joining the royal guard. If you fail the test today you may still join the army. Now take your chosen weapon and pick one of the Royal Guard lined up on the training field. You will pass if you can either overpower your opponent, or last 5 minutes in a spar with them. Keep in mind they will not be going easy on you, they have been instructed to battle you as if you were an enemy. Her father said giving the new recruits time to pick their weapons and opponents. Picking up a long spear Alice walked over and chose a guard that was about 2 heads taller than she was. Spinning the spear around she pointed it at him signifying she is ready to start the spar. The guard a young man with buzzed blonde hair, blue eyes and a toned body raised his sword and paused a moment before lunging at Alice in an attempt to prevent her from effectively using her spear. Flipping backwards and kicking her opponent in the chin as she used the back end of the spear to launch herself further back Alice landed and took her position again. Not letting the guard recover Alice let out a fury of jabs towards him hitting him a few times in the chest as he narrowly avoided being hit in the head. Grabbing his spear as it passed by him he pulled it from her hands, using the momentum caused by the guard Alice launched herself forward using her wings to twist her body she wrapped herself around her opponent putting him in an arm bar. Putting as much pressure on his neck with her legs as she could the guard jumped up flapping his wings breaking free of the arm bar. Diving back to the ground and taking her spear Alice took to the air to fight her opponent while flying. Changing blows and blocking each other strikes in an intense aerial battle the two hear a single bell, letting them know the battle is over underscore 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 do you enjoy fighting so much that you dream about it? Yumi said with a sigh as she brought out some food. Miss. Astala, your father has sent a message. He wants to inform you that he is sending some strong adventures to meet us halfway seeing how there has been some trouble with some people targeting the family at the kingdom, the carriage driver said through a metal tube to convey the message. Thank. You let's pick up the pace then, she said. I wonder just who could be targeting us for my father to send adventures to assist us in our travels. This happen often? Alice asked curiously. Not too often but every now and then a business rival will try their hand at taking my family down, but they never even get close to succeeding. Yumi said not even trying to hide her annoyance. Must. Be tough Princess Astala, Alice said jokingly. Ha, ha, it's your royal princess Yumi or my beloved Yumi, she said returning the joke. Their travels continued without a problem as the two continued to talk and laugh which made the time fly by. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. A few days pass as the terrain starts to visibly change, instead of a vast forest that seemed to go on forever mountains so tall the reached the clouds and large lakes could be seen, while still having a forest it looked to be much less condensed. The trees were tall and the leaves and tree limbs didn't form until they were almost at the top of the tree letting you see further into them. Wild animal could be seen peacefully going about their own business only looking up to see the carriage every so often. It was a beautiful and peaceful scene one that reminded Alice of home, causing her heart to ache with memories of her family and friends. Alice still had no idea how much time had passed since her death and reincarnation. We are getting close, 
I would say a day's travel at most until we reach the kingdom. I wonder where the adventurers are, we should have met up with them a while back. Yumi said as she stuck her head out of the window looking at the path in front of them as she slightly wagged her tail. Your tail seems to show that you're pretty happy Yumi, Alice said as she lightly laughed. Sitting back down and blushing a little she picked Shadow up, you understand my pain down you? Yumi said with a serious face looking at little Shadow. I have no idea what this woman is referring to but tell her to put me down. Shadow said to Alice. Looks like he knows what you mean, even his tail gives him away. Alice said lightly chuckling seeing little Shadow's tail move back and forth while being held by Yumi. Letting out a small growl Shadow freed himself from Yumi and sat as far as he could away from the two for teasing him. Such a sassy magical beast, Alice said still smiling underscore 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 unable to see the kingdom walls the two couldn't help but be happy that they can finally get out and stretch their legs soon. I was thinking you're basically coming to a new kingdom without anywhere to stay so I would be more than happy if you lived in my estate with me. It has way too many rooms that are not even used and you're in my party now so it would be super convenient, what do you think? Yumi couldn't help but ask as she's tried to think of a way to ask for the last few days but couldn't find a way to ask. That works for me, I was just going to try to rent a room at the guild but if you have a free room I am all for saving some money. Alice said as they got closer to the gates. Upon seeing the carriage approach, the guards quickly moved all of the adventurers out of the way so they could pass through with no trouble. Looking out at all the different shops and admiring the difference in culture in the kingdom, Alice barely noticed they had stopped moving. We are here, let's go say hi to my father. It's been a few years since I have seen him, he surely will be happy to see me. Yumi said as she took Alice's hand and ran towards the massive front doors to her father's mansion. Her father's house looked like a fairy tale home for royalty. It stood three stories tall and had beautiful stained glass windows along the top depicting her father's life's journey. While the grass was clean cut and the home itself was made from all white brick. Entering the house Alice couldn't help but marvel even more at the gorgeous interior made from a mix of white and black marble and velvet. Carpet that lined the steps of her stairway leading to the second floor that had a portrait of her father and mother standing embarrassing each other lovingly. This place is something else. I figured your family had money because of the carriage but this is more than what I imagined a real princess would have. Alice said as they passed countless art pieces and maids as they entered her father's study. Daddy, I am home did you miss me? Yumi said as she let go of Alice's hand and jumped into her father's arms giving him a big hug. Of course, you should have came back sooner you have made me wait so many years to see you again. Her father said returning her embrace before turning his eyes on Alice. I see you brought home a friend mind introducing me? He said as he stood up walking over to Alice before outreaching his hand to her. Alice this is my father Erida Ken Astala Duke of Kingdom Samaria, Yumi said as Alice shook him hand not knowing of the proper etiquette for meeting a duke. It is nice to meet you Alice I hope you enjoy your time in the kingdom and you have my thanks for joining Yumi on her trip back home, I hope she did not cause you too much trouble. Erida said as he motioned for a maid to come. Jasmine, prepare a feast for tonight, we need to celebrate my daughter's return. He said as the maid bowed and left the study. Daddy can Alice live here for a while in one of our spare rooms? I already told her she can, she is going to be my party member for when I go back to the guild. Yumi said giving he father a slight pout. Okay, okay no need to throw in a pout I would have gladly let her had you asked or not I still owe her for keeping you company over the last few days. Her father said as Yumi happily grabbed her hand and ran to show her to the room next to her I am starting to feel like the side character to Yumi's life with as much as she leads me around Alice thought. Well you do let her do as she pleases you have no one to blame but yourself, Shadow chimed in. Hey, Yumi tomorrow can you show me around the kingdom to the mages and adventures guilds, I have some things I want to do, Alice asked trying to get Yumi to slow down a bit. Yeah sure, we can go shopping after that? Yumi said not giving Alice a choice. After having been shown her room and various other rooms in the estate as well as the garden and her favorite maids, butlers, and staff members that she hasn't seen in years Alice finally got some alone time in her new room. I guess if I was taking a friend home to see my family I would probably have just as much energy and excitement as well, Alice said remembering her father and mother slightly tearing up. Ugh this is harder than I thought it would be, maybe Erida would know something about my race I need to find a chance to ask him later. Wiping the tears from her face Alice composed herself before unpacking her belongings from her inventory and bags. Laying on the fluffy and luxurious bed Alice pet Shadow, 
You still promise not to die and leave me right? She asked Shadow feeling insecure I would never leave you behind master, even if the whole world turns against you I will always be there at your side. Shadow said nudging his head against hers fully able to feel her deep sadness. 23 Trouble at the Astala Estate Petting Shadow and almost falling asleep on the comfortable bed Alice can faintly hear shouts and sounds of swords clashing against each other. Sitting up quickly the only thing Alice could remember was Yumi talking about people targeting her family. Quickly equipping her armor and taking out her scythe Alice dashes out of her room and through the hallways to the sounds of the battle taking place. Exiting the hallway near the stairwell she sees Duke Astala his daughter, and some of the servants Yumi introduced her to fighting against hooded mercenaries. Having flashbacks as her heart starts racing Alice sees the scenes of battle that took place before she was killed. As if a switch flipped in Alice her gaze turns cold as she unconsciously lets out her demonic gaze skill and grips her side so hard her knuckles turn white as her fingernails cut into her hands causing them to start bleeding. Alice are you okay what's going on with you I can only feel rage from your right now, Shadow says slowly backing away from her feeling danger. Before he can take two steps back Alice uses rift warp to appear between Duke Astala and his opponent taking them both by surprise. Not giving the hooded man a chance to react Alice quickly swings her scythe decapitating the man sending his head flying into the hands of one of the other mercenaries. Putting a little more mana into her demonic gaze causing the man to freeze unable to move Alice sinks into the shadows leaving everyone in the room to pause a moment to wonder where she went. Coming out of the shadows behind the mercenaries as they still looked around for her, giving the residents of the estate time to react and land a few kills. Ignoring her surroundings, Alice raises her hand as five magic circles appear around her, forming large fireballs. You will all die for taking my family from me. I could have had a normal life if it was not for you devils, Alice said, about to launch her magic attack, only stopping because Yumi was holding on to her. Trying to break through her gaze Yumi decided to act rashly to bring Alice back to her senses kissing her. Almost instantly Alice comes back around breaking free of her rage pushing Yumi away. What the hell was that now isn't the time to flirt kill these devils. She said as she dashed past Yumi leaving her feeling defeated and rejected before Yumi decided to take her anger out on the mercenaries. After a seemingly endless battle against the invaders the battle was finally won, only resulting in the death of one of the house servants a butler who was a former D-rank adventure as well as all of the mercenaries. You really gave me a scare there Alice, if it wasn't for you me my home would be needing some serious repairs, but you have my thanks if not for you we may have lost and my daughter and I may have perished as well. Duke Astala said bowing slightly, I am sorry for losing control. They brought up some very unpleasant memories and I lost control, Alice said feeling bad as she might have tried to kill everyone if she ended up killing all the hooded men and her rage had not died down. I am sorry for kissing you. I just panicked and didn't know how to snap you out of it. Yumi said blushing and feeling like she took things too far. It's okay, if it wasn't for me you wouldn't have had to go that far. Thank you for doing everything you could. Alice said trying to cheer her up a little. Yumi, why don't the two of you go to bed while I attend to some things? I will leave some money out so you ladies can go shopping tomorrow and blow off some steam, her father said before taking his departed employee away with the other staff following. He is right let's go to bed and go have some fin tomorrow. Yumi said running to her room still feeling kind of down underscore 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 on waking up and having breakfast with Yumi the two girls headed out to explore the kingdom with a large amount of money left by Duke Astala whom also left a note with the money I have left for each one gold worth of money to go spend and unwind a little bit please have fun and try to forget about last night if possible, I have informed all of the shops we control to give you whatever you too would like so be sure to visit those shops. Daddy your father sure is generous I wonder how long it would take to earn this much money on your own? Alice said feeling the weight of the money in her hands. Don't be silly Alice you can't just hold a bag full of money in plain sight for everyone to see, that is just asking for trouble. Yumi said taking Alice's bag of money and storing it quickly. Following Yumi around to various shops and buying a lot of different clothes which seemed to cheer Yumi up a great deal. Do you mind if we head to the Mages Guild? Alice asked feeling slightly exhausted from all the shopping. Half of her inventory was already filled with clothing bags which is saying something since four bags can fit in one inventory space. We can stop by, there is still the auction hall I wanted to show you it starts in a few hours so we have some time to kill at the guilds. Yumi said while leading the way humming I wonder if I should sell the weapon ornament I got from the dungeon, I may be able to make enough to buy something good, 
Alice thought to herself as she walked still debating if she should equip it to her side. Arriving at the Mages Guild she was very happy to see people entering through the door like normal. This reminds me, can you use magic Yumi? Alice asked as they entered the guild. I have the earth element although my magical abilities are lacking pretty greatly so the most I can do is make small earth shields, Yumi said slightly jealous of Alice's magical abilities. Hello, welcome to the Mages Guild, how may I help you? A young elf girl asked while reading her book only half looking up at them. My name is Alice I came from the Rudham Kingdom and wish to learn some wind magic if I can, Alice said hoping to learn something useful. Ah, well currently all of our wind element instructors are out at the auction hall either selling items or trying to purchase items, if you come back after then I would be happy to schedule the lesson for you, the elf girl said getting back to her book. Well. We were going to go there anyways we may as well go, Yumi said taking Alice by the hand and leading her to the auction hall. I actually have two scimitars I obtained from a dungeon that have decent stats I would like to put up for auction, can you help me? Alice said following Yumi. Arriving at the auction hall and standing in line to speak to an organizer the two chatted and Alice talked about her time in the dungeon and about the last boss. Ugh no wonder you agreed to come with me, how could they just leave you like that? Yumi said as she started to plot revenge on the group that left her dear Alice for dead. Shush I have already forgiven them all that matters now is that I am continuing my journey. Alice said as they walked up to the gentleman in charge of listing new items. Please, take your item out and set it on the table so I can appraise the item, this auction hall only takes items of D rank or higher, anything below that rank won't be seen. The young man said casually sitting down waiting to see what Alice has to sell Kobold Lord's Twin Scimitars 2 halves find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. STR plus 10 dex plus 10 vit plus 5 seeing the items the young man just shrugged and took the items, D rank weapon set, it just barely passes the only real factor to look at is the stat boost. Keep this ticket on you and turn it in after the auction is over. If your items sell then you can collect your money after we take a 8% cut. He said handing Alice a ticket before showing the two into the main hall. Where? Should we sit? Alice said completely clueless where to go. Since my father donates a lot of items and money to this place we have our own VIP section to sit in, Yumi said leading Alice upstairs. Walking through the long hallway they eventually arrived at their room, as soon as the door opened Alice was able to clearly see the same type of luxury as the Astala estate. A crystal chandelier hung from the ceiling, the furniture was made from polished wood with fluffy silk seating, the room even had a fully stocked bar with very expensive looking liqueur. Does everything your family has looked so expensive? Alice questioned. It is to be expected from the duke who saved the kingdom in financial crisis you learn to live with it, Yumi said just shrugging it all off since it was second nature to her. There are a ton of people here, must mean that a lot of good things are being auctioned off today. Maybe I will be able to get a good weapon to use on our adventures. Yumi said looking hopeful as she leaned back in her chair slowly kicking her legs like a little kid who couldn't reach the ground would. What kind of weapon do you prefer to use? I have only seen you with a sword so far. Alice questioned trying to picture Yumi with different kinds of weapons. I am most skilled using a Kyokutsu Shogi. It is a weapon that has a double-edged blade, with another curved blade attached near the hilt at a 45 to 60 degree angle. This is attached to 12 to 18 feet of rope, chain, or hair which then ends in a large metal ring. Yumi said as she pulled out her old broken one. That's new, I have never seen a weapon like that before, Alice said inspecting the weapon wondering how you would even fight using it. It is a weapon from my ancestor's kingdom far far away, my father says I could try to travel there but I may not make it before I die of old age, Yumi said storing her broken weapon away again. Alice sat back in her chair trying to visualize her and Yumi fighting together in a party with her using such a weird weapon, it's no use I just can't see that weapon being used to fight monsters. Alice thought to herself waiting on the auction to start. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for gathering this evening at our humble auction hall. As many of you already know we have quite the list of items being auctioned today, many of the high-ranking families have decided to join us today for this auction as well. I will now explain the rules for those who are new and do not know yet. If you bid on an item and do not have the fund to pay then you shall be sent to the mines to work off your debt, after your debt is paid you will receive your item and be set free. There is to be no altercations in the auction hall, as always we have two A-rank adventures contracted with our hall to put a stop to anything you may cause. As soon as you're done purchasing you may head to the receptionists at any time to pay for the items you have won bids on. Anyone breaking these rules will be subject to a fine and or banishment from the hall. 
the auctioneer said speaking loudly and clearly. Without further delay let us get on with the auction. 24 A chat with the Duke. We are kicking this auction off with a new entry to the list of items to be sold here tonight, it is a weapon set effect. The auctioneer said as a man came onto the stage holding the twin scimitars Alice put up for auction which caused a small amount of commotion as the auctioneer told everyone the stat boosts it gives. These scimitars will help any D-rank adventure to have a leg up in dungeons and killing monsters out in the world, the starting bid is 18 silver coins. The auctioneer said as he started to call out the bids of people on lower floor of the auction house. After a brief moment of bidding between four different D-ranked adventures, a slim young elf man man won the bid at 128 silver. Continuing on with the auction, many different weapons, armor, and potions were being sold all well above the price range Alice had even with the money that Yumi's father left for the two girls. What are the odds that we even come across something we can afford? Alice asked, looking over only to see Yumi fast asleep. I guess this is pretty boring when you can't even bid on things. Hearing a commotion taking place Alice turned her attention back to the lower floors, two men were fighting over a bid driving the price up rapidly. The item being auctioned was a weapon ornament that gave the users a burning effect 500. Silver? I dare you to outbid me see what happens to you. A large beast man said with black hair and white tipped wolf ears making him seem slightly less intimidating than he actually was 550. Silver? Bring it on old man you don't scare me let's see how much money you have on you today. The other man said equal in size but human with signs of his hair turning grey. Enough. Both of you, I have decided to buy this item. 800 silver. One of the men sitting in a different VIP booth called out. It. Seems that young master Vaughn has taken an interest in this item will there be any other bids? The auctioneer called out waiting to see if anyone would bid. Then it is settled master Vaughn has won the bid for 800 silver. Now on to the next item. The auctioneer said bring out a great shield that was B rank and completely useless to Alice. After not being able to buy a thing Alice poked and pulled at Yumi's cheeks until she finally woke up, MN. Is it over already? Yeah you could have told me that we would not be able to afford anything I was pretty bored, Alice said as she stood up stretching. My, bad it has been so long since I have been here that I forgot how things went on big nights but it is still good to experience the auction hall and get a feel for how things work and for who the big players are. Yumi said getting up and sleepily walking out the door underscore 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 and collected her money from selling her weapons, Alice, and Yumi headed back to the estate. We should avoid staying out too late today. I want to stay close to my dad in case we come under attack again. Yumi said worrying about her father. Then, let's go back, I was hoping I could speak with your father some more anyways. Alice said as the two headed back home making small talk and laughing about the fun they had today. Walking into Yumi's father's study she sees him sitting quietly while reading an old book that looks like it could fall apart at any moment. Duke, Astala, I was hoping I could talk with you for a moment if you have some time to spare. Alice said trying to be as polite as she can. Please call me Erida, you are a close friend of my daughter and even helped defend my home. You do not need to be so formal with me, what would you like to talk about? Erida said putting his book down and sitting up in his chair and faced Alice. I wanted to know if you had any information on angels, what happened to them? Alice asked nervously. Is this due to you being a demi-angel by chance? Erida asked causing Alice to almost jump up in shock. How? Alice tried to finish her sentence but couldn't. Don't worry, I assume you don't know much of what happened 50 years ago. You're at most the same age as my daughter, so it would not surprise me if you didn't. 50 years ago the demonic army found a way to reach the angel kingdom and they waged a war that the angels did not see coming. Angels may have been blessed by God and protected but that protection only went so far and the angel race got too relaxed. The demons used weapons forge in their own blood to slaughter the entire angel kingdom. It is said that there is not a single survivor of the angels, the demons even went as far to kill any race that hand wings or killed anyone that had major ties to the angels. Due to this reason less and less information about the angels stays known to the other races. Pausing a bit seeing Alice visually shook at the information he was telling her he decided to give her some time to process what he was saying as he got her a glass of water. It is also said that the angel race can be brought back from extinction. There was a prophecy of a fallen angel that would appear to the wood some years later and she would fight her way through the demons. Only by killing the race that destroyed the angels can that fallen angel regain their wings and begin to restart the angel race. 
The demons have tried for a long time now to snuff out this prophecy so that the world would completely forget the angel race. Arida said sitting back in his chair looking at Alice seriously. I have a blessing from God that allows me to see people for what they truly are. Lies and masks are no use in front of me. I knew from the moment I saw you that you were probably the one from the prophecy. With all that being said I want you to know I will do everything I can to protect your secret. I believe the reason I received this blessing for this very task. Arida said relaxing a bit waiting for Alice to fully grasp the situation. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates. Better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. If I am found out the demons will come for you and your daughter are you not worried about that? Alice said weakly realizing now that her being around people can put them in danger. I don't believe that you would let yourself be found out so easily, nor do I believe that you would let harm come to my daughter. You're not a evil person and I can see that my daughter while pushy and clingy is still an important person to you. He said confidently main quest discovered wipe out the demon race reward, final class up, God's wings, element of life Alice paused at seeing the system message appear after learning the full story of what happened to her race and the ones responsible. Is the system a part of my blessing from God? Alice questioned to herself feeling weaker than she ever has. Try not to bear this weight alone, I can't even imagine having the fate of an entire race on my shoulders. You have me, and I will do everything in my limited power to assist you. Arida said now standing in front of Alice holding out his hand. Right, you have my thanks. She said taking his hand and standing before leaving to reflect on everything she has learned underscore 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 on her room and unpacking all the new clothes she bought today, Alice wished that she could see her family again. If there was one thing God could give her it would be to get her parents back. Thinking back to her time in the Angel Kingdom Alice recalled all the good memories she had growing up and playing with her father. I hope you and mother are at peace, Alice thought to herself before hearing a knock at her door. Hey, you me what's going on? Alice asked opening the door. How, did your chat with my father go? I wanted to join you guys but it looked like a pretty serious talk. Yumi asked curiously sitting on Alice's bed. Honestly I learned a lot of things I wanted to know for a while now, do you want to know what it was about? Alice asked. If she is going to be in danger because of me she may as well have a choice. If you don't mind, I don't normally see my father talk with someone with that kind of expression. Yumi said listening closely. Alice began to explain to Yumi her who situation as Yumi sat and listened to the whole thing finding it hard to believe that a member of the angel race was actually her closest friend. So, in short your whole race was wiped out leaving you behind. And if the demons find out about you then anyone associated with you will be targeted by the demon race and the only way to bring your race back is to wipe out the demons the same as they did to the angels? Yumi asked seemingly brushing off the severity of the situation she is in. That is correct. I understand if you want to cut ties with me I will back my belongings and find lodging somewhere else. Alice said standing up as she starts to pack her things trying not to cry. Well, you can't take on a race of demons on your own. So I guess I will have to get stronger with you won't I? Yumi said with a smile causing Alice to drop the clothes she was packing. You might die, I am going to die eventually anyways, Yumi said with a grin. Then, you're not allowed to die before I do if you promise me that I will stay. Alice said turning to face Yumi. It's a promise, as long as you promise to not keep any more secrets from me. Yumi said while picking up little Shadow and petting him feeling victorious. Congratulations on getting a new ally. Shadow said purring as he was reviving attention underscore 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 next day Alice woke up early and headed out going to the mages guild to schedule with a wind element instructor arriving at the guild Alice headed inside to talk to the receptionist hello I was here the other day trying to get a teacher for the wind element right well sit on the bench over there and wait until someone comes to get you. The receptionist said pointing at the bench at the far corner of the lobby. Taking her seat Alice begins to read from her grimoire to kill the time until her new teacher arrives. Casually flipping from page to page she becomes slightly consumed in her study not noticing her teacher trying to get her attention. Hello, are you Alice? The elderly gentleman asked as he stood in front of her. Yes sorry I was doing some reading and got pretty absorbed into it. Alice said as she stood and shook his hand, I see you have a shadow element grimoire, do you perhaps have a reason you asked to see a wind element teacher? 
The man said curiously, I have three elements and I am curious about learning my third which would be the wind element, it is nice to meet you teacher, Alice said politely, oh, my, how rare to have three elements especially the shadow element, if you would like you can follow me to the training grounds and we can start our first lesson, the man said whilst offering his hand to Alice, 25 wind element, reaching the training grounds behind the mages guild the elderly man instructed Alice to start by standing in the middle of the training grounds, a small arena-like structure made from regular brick. Firsts. Things first, in order to use the wind element properly you will need to feel the mana around you. You will have to single out the mana you feel from the breeze you can currently feel and ignore all other sources. The man instructed Dot closing her eyes and clearing all thoughts from her mind. Alice felt the gentle breeze run over her as she tried to focus and feel the mana the wind pass by her. Seeing that Alice was grasping the feel of the mana she needed to focus on he started to smile a bit. Normally it would take a few days for someone to be able to get the feel for the mana they needed to use, Alice however only needed a few minutes maybe it is because she has three elements and can use two already that she is able to catch on so quickly. The old man thought to himself quite pleased that his new student seemed to be a prodigy. Good now slowly try to take control over that mana and change its direction if done correctly you should be able to make the wind move in slow circles around you. I need to go talk with the guild head but I will be back soon. The man said as he walked back into the guild to find the guild master. Walking with a small amount of haste, the elderly man opened the doors to the guild master's room. Alistair, I have a new student who was able to grasp the feel for the wind's mana in minutes, and to make it better, she has three elements. The man said eagerly to the guild master. Oh, that sounds pretty interesting. Where is this girl right now? Alistair asked curiously, wanting to know more about this supposed genius student. She is outside on the training arena trying to make the wind move. I figured that would give me enough time to let you know about her and get back. Normally to move the wind around your body it takes years of practice. He replied, let's go take a look at the little miss and see what she can do. Alistair said walking through the guild lobby towards the training grounds underscore 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 started to understand how to move the wind around her. She started by imagining the wind as streams moving past her and then willing the streams to move in circles around her body. I wonder if I can speed the flow of mana and make the wind blow faster. Alice thought to herself as her hair started to go from lightly blowing in the wind to almost violently whipping the air around her. The wind started spinning around her so quickly that the dust from the arena ground slowly got sucked in and forming a small tornado around her. Faster, faster, faster. Alice thought wanting to know how far she could take things. The wind was moving around Alice so fast that she started to slowly lift off the ground making her float a few feet off the ground. Am I floating? This feels amazing I feel like I am able to fly again. Alice thought with a smile underscore 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 on out the back doors Alistair and Ron were met with fierce winds being sucked towards Alice making a small tornado around her while she floated at the center. I thought you said she just started to feel the mana. How can she make a tornado around herself only 30 minutes into learning the wind element for the first time? Alistair asked the dumbfounded old man. All I did was tell her to move the wind around her I never told her to try anything near this magnitude. Ron said as he snapped his fingers causing the wind to instantly come to a halt causing Alice to fall back to the ground. Ow, what the hell? Alice said as she landed on her butt. Forgive us for putting a stop to your fun but had you kept going and lost control you really might have set a tornado loose on the kingdom. Alistair said as he helped Alice stand back up. Alice, have you had your mana measured yet? Ron asked quite curiously thinking that a low level mage shouldn't have the mana capacity to use the wind element this well. I already know how much mana I have. Alice said wishing she could have kept feeling like she was flying again. How much, if you don't mind me asking Miss Alice? Alistair asked 515. It is 540 with some of my gear equipped. Alice said thinking nothing of it. And. What level are you? Alistair asked again. I. Am level 13. Alice said still not understanding why she is getting the third degree. My. Last question. What race are you Alice? Alistair asked slightly more serious than he was before. Fuck. I hope I didn't give myself away already. Way to go Alice. Alice thought to herself before answering. My race is not important. And it is none of your business. Alice said bluntly hoping the two would just accept the answer. I 
See, if that's your answer I suppose there is nothing more I can say on the matter, my name is Alistair. I am the guild master for this mage's guild it is nice to meet you, but I have some things to take care of for now, Alistair said as he walked away not prying for more information. That reminds me I have not introduced myself yet, my name is Ronald but you can call me Ron. Ron said before shaking Alice's hand. Nice to meet you Ron, I think I should head back home for now. Alice said cutting their chat short and running back home underscore 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 on the doors and locking them behind him Alistair walked over to the large mirror on his wall and waved his hand over the surface causing a tall man in black robes to appear on the mirror. I have found someone that may be of interest to you Lord Kira, Alistair said as he gave a deep bow. Please, tell me about this supposed person of interest I do not have time to play around right now, Lord Kira said coldly. A new mage appeared in our kingdom, she is a low level but she has the mana of a level 40 mage. That is not all either, she also posses the elements, wind, fire, and shadow. I believe that she could prove useful, Alistair said still in his bow not daring to look up and face the lord of the demon race. If she is not dangerous I will send my son to fetch her. She has been a pain in my ass lately and I could use a task to keep him busy. Thank you for informing me, my son will arrive in a week's time. Be sure to inform me when he arrives. Lord Kira said as he ended the communication underscore 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 and back at the Astala estate, Alice ran inside and looked for Yumi's father. What's wrong Alice, what is the rush? Yumi said curiously as she walked down the stairs. I need to talk to your father, Alistair the mage's guild master questioned me about my race and I want to know more about Alistair from your father to know if I should be worried or not. Alice said trying not to panic. He is in the garden let's go talk to him, Yumi said as she grabbed Alice's hand to calm her down. What? A nice surprise girls, what can I do for you too? Arida said as he continued to read his book while sitting on a bench next to a rose bush. Alistair, from the Mages Guild questioned me about my level, mana, and about my race. I want to know if you know anything about him, I did not tell him about my race but I am still scared. Alice said with her heart still racing not wanting to put the family that has been so nice to her in danger. As far as I know Alistair has been in the kingdom for about 10 years but not much is known about him before that time, what caused him to question you? Arida asked curiously closing his book and focusing on Alice. After finishing hearing what happened from Alice he pondered what the best course of action would be, I will try to dig up his past a little more and see what I can find out, but using magic like that likely surprised him, it isn't impossible that he just wanted to know more about the amazing mage that can use magic on that scale at a low level. Hearing what Arida said made Alice feel a little bit better but she still had an uneasy feeling about the whole situation. Ugh Shadow what do you think? Alice asked Shadow who was currently sitting above the fresh fish tank in the kitchen. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. I would say to keep your eyes open, while it is possible he was just interested in you that may be a bad thing. Who knows if he told someone about your abilities people have been abducted for less and you're one of the only mages with three elements. Shadow said as he pawed at the fish swimming by taunting him behind the glass that doesn't make me feel any better but thanks. Alice thought feeling a little more dreadful. Yumi, when are we going to get a party together and go to dungeons or kill forest monsters? Alice asked wanting to level up as much as possible. We can go to the Adventures Guild tomorrow to find a party and a good dungeon for us to do. We are a lower level than most of the adventures here so it may be hard to find a group. Yumi said, why? Don't we find a good blacksmith to fix or make you a new weapon? Seems a lot better than waiting for one to just show up. Alice said thinking back about Yumi's weapon. That's a good idea, want to head to one now? Yumi said excitedly. Sure lead the way? Alice said happily, she needed a distraction anyways. The two girls walked around the kingdom and looked at various stalls as they made their way to a local blacksmith. Stopping at small stall on the way Alice felt drawn to a ring she saw sitting on top of a purple silk cloth. It was a shiny silver ring with runes carved into it and small purple gems embedded in it ring the fairy a ring once worn by the fairy king. Useless acknowledged to the fairies sir how much for this ring? Alice questioned, this ring is basically useless since the fairies don't show unless they have no choice, the ring is 300 silver though. The stall owner said, I 
Would save your money Alice, it might be pretty but that is super pricey for a useless ring, Yumi said trying to convince her friend not to make a stupid purchase. I, guess you're right. Alice said as they continued their walk to the blacksmith workshop Laszlo's blacksmith services the two arrived at the blacksmith's workshop that looked like a small two-story building made from red brick. Hello ladies what can I do for you? Laszlo said while polishing a shield at his workstation a few feet away from the furnace. I, was curious if you could repair my weapon or make me a new one, Yumi said as she pulled out her kyokutsu shogi. Interesting, this is the first I have seen a weapon like this. With the material I have right now I can repair it but I also believe I can make one that is much better than this if you would like to commission me, Laszlo said still inspecting the weapon. Can you repair this one since it means a lot to me as well as make me a better one? Yumi questioned unable to control her tail. Sure the repair will only cost 39 silver, and the new one will cost 480 silver. If you want it made from top tier materials it will cost 1200 silver, Laszlo said putting her weapon on his table. 26 A Spider-Filled Cave Starting the new day, Alice and Yumi set out to the blacksmith Laszlo to pick up Yumi's new and repaired weapon after receiving some extra funds from Arida. I can't wait to be able to use my favorite weapon again. Yumi said excitedly as she walked and skipped. I bet, I want to see how you will fight using that odd weapon as well. After we finish up at Laszlo's we should go to the guild and find a party or a group request to finish. Speaking of fights what level are you? Alice asked just realizing House never bothered to look or find out before Yumi Astala level 18 I am level 18 right now, and I am rank D at the guild, you can't hit rank C until you're level 25 and finish a few dungeons or do 10 solo requests in D rank. Yumi said causing Alice to give a blank stare before replying, you have a few levels on me I am only level 13 and just got D rank not long ago. Well you have three elements and as far as I know you have great combat experience so it isn't a problem having you in my party, Yumi said as they arrived at Laszlo's. After paying Laszlo the silver and reviving both the repaired and brand new Kyokutsu Shogi, Yumi stored the repaired one and attached the new one to her weight band, the chain was made from carbon steel, the both ends of the weapon looked black with a silver glow on the blades making it look quite weird to Alice as she was looking at it. Now. That that is settled we should head to the guild to see what party we can join. Yumi said taking Alice's hand and rushing off towards the guild. Even after knowing I know where to go she still prefers to lead me around like this, well whatever she is happy. Alice thought to herself you can pretend all you want that you don't like it but we both know it makes you happy, little shadow said as he kept pace with the two girls. Arriving at the guild the two girls made their way to the dungeon board to see about finding a party when Alice heard a group of shady men talking at a table nearby causing her heart to sink. Did you hear that a demon is making his way to this kingdom? Yeah, apparently he has some business at the mages guild, I wonder what happened to cause one of those guys to come all this way? Who knows, but I am probably going to hang out closer to the king's castle in case anything goes wrong. That is a good idea maybe we can find some temporary work up there. Hearing the conversation Alice's face went pale as Yumi was busy looking at all the party openings and different dungeons while trying to find one suitable for Alice to tag along with. I found a dungeon party with two openings Alice. Yumi said turning around to see Alice pale with a worried look. There is a demon coming to this kingdom Yumi. Alice said. If. You heard people talking about that rumor I wouldn't worry too much, my father looked into it and the demon that is on his way is just a low level one. If something happens then the demon won't be able to leave this kingdom alive. Yumi said hugging Alice trying to cheer her up. I want to level as soon as possible. Let's join whatever party you talked about. Alice said as Yumi took the flyer down and took it to the party leader sitting at a table at the back of the guild. The leader was a human man with blonde hair and blue eyes that looked like he could be an angel if he had wings. He was very fit and had a large shield on his back and a sword at his side. Are you Eric? My name is Yumi, and this is Alice. If you still have two spots open we would like to join. Yumi said politely. That is me, yeah I still have two spots open. Currently we are lacking damage dealers so we are not interested in any mages right now. Eric replied with a smile seeing the two beauties wanting to join his party. I can use three elements but I am best with my scythe or a sword and dagger. Alice said as she pulled the scythe out of her inventory. Well now, you don't see that kind of weapon every day. As long as your friend Yumi is also a damage dealer then there should not be a problem with you two joining the rest of my party will be here shortly they will be pretty happy to have another girl or two in the party, so far I am the only male. 
Eric said motioning the two to sit and join him for a drink while they wait on the rest of the party. While talking to each other about their levels and attack styles the other members of Eric's group started to show up one after another. The first to show up was the healer, a tall and slim man by the name of Josh who instead of having a staff used a shield and mace which seemed odd to Alice. Wondering how the man would effectively heal and buff the team if he was fighting like everyone else the next member of the party showed up. She was a very voluptuous woman in her late twenties, having black long hair and eyes that seemed to drag you in, she introduced herself as Yuki. She continued by informing the two new members of the party that she was the party's mage using the earth element. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. A short period later the last member of the team arrived, he was only slightly taller than Alice and had blue hair carrying a short staff with a large blue gem at the top wrapped up by the staff's wood. He introduced himself as Alex the party's second mage who used the water element. Finishing the introduction the party leader began by talking about the dungeon the party will attempt to complete. Okay, the dungeon we will be going to today is known as the Spider Queen's Burrow. Many adventurers have died in this dungeon and the lowest level monster in there is level 15, Alice is only level 13 but she has good combat experience and ability so if she gets overwhelmed I have instructed her to recover near the mages until we can leave the dungeon. This dungeon has only 3 floors but the queen has been known to appear on the second floor at times so I want everyone to be on guard once we enter the dungeon. Eric said gaining nods from everyone. I. I'm not sure how long the dungeon will take but this dungeon is well known for dropping worth while loot from killing the queen, if everyone is ready we should set out to the dungeon and get things started. Eric said while standing up underscore 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 on at a large cave in one of the mountains Eric informed the party that they are in front of the dungeon entrance and to get their gear ready. Along the way to the dungeon the party helped Little Shadow reach level 11 allowing him to gain his first skill Little Shadow level 11 HP 180 slash 180 MP 200 slash 200 skill, Beast Fang Tier 1, bites a monster or human in a critical area causing a bleed effect minus 10 HP per second for 10 seconds, felling proud that he can help more with dungeons Shadow walked ready to pounce beside Alice as the party entered the dungeon. Alice please let me help when you need me so I can gain experience with you. My next skill will happen at level 20, Shadow pleaded eager to become more than a fierce looking house cat. Don't worry Shadow if you see a chance to help please do, Alice said smiling feeling a little calmer as they go further into the cave while using her fire element to make a small fireball in her hands to give the party some light as they walk and look around for mobs. The cave was dark with little to no light other than Alice's fire and dead silent with large spider webs covering the cave walls. Okay. We should stop in the middle of this chamber I will use my war cry to pull any monsters hiding to ambush us so be ready. Eric said before his throat has a slight red glow to it like he was about to breath fire. Huaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
Using his war cry skill again the spiders once again started to quickly crawl out from behind the webs this time in a larger number. Seeing the number of spiders making their way towards her Alice used shadow zone causing the spiders to slow down to half pace. Nice job Alice everyone attack and take advantage of the opportunity Alice created. Josh shouted not wanting them to rest before the battle even ends. Alice once again used all her strength to send spiders flying this time killing a few due to Josh's buff. Seeing the spiders moving slowly Yuki gave a smile and pointed at the direction of a mob of spiders earth spikes as soon as Yuki said the name of the spell spikes shot up from the ground impaling numerous spiders taking out a quarter of the spiders in the chamber. Alex on the other hand raised his staff and swung it creating a blade of water that flew towards another group of spiders effectively cutting the legs off the bottom of the spiders causing little shadow to not waste the nice gift before him. Jumping on top of spider after spider little shadow took chunks out of each of the legless spiders giving him a massive experience boost. Yumi and Alice teamed up, while Alice sent spiders flying Yumi would send her blade flying out at each of the spiders killing them instantly. 27 Unexpected Surprise after the chamber of spiders were defeated the party regrouped and ate a quick meal before setting out deeper into the cave. To Alice's surprise she saw the level up notification that she must have overlooked while fighting the spiders. It's about time I leveled again, she thought to herself before bringing up the status window as they slowly made their way through a narrow passageway. Name, Alice class, fallen demi-angel title, hunter HP, 425-425, 450-450, MP. 570-570, 595-595, level, 14 STR, 5058 plus 15 VIT, 50 plus 10 int, 9100 plus 5 DAX, 3040, plus 15 plus 5, DEF, 30, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10, AGI, 4850, plus 5 plus 10, skill points, 30 zero skills, familiar telepathy, blessed by God, passive, demonic gaze feeling the familiar rush of power. Overtake her, Alice was excited to see how much more damage she would be able to do to the spiders. We have reached the last chamber, after this we can go down to the second level so let's finish this pretty quick. Eric said as he and Josh stepped out to the center of the chamber and held aggro of the spiders that quickly rushed to attack them. Fighting the spiders with a little more efficiency than the previous chambers the party made quick work of the spiders not taking any damage. Not wasting any time the group started to walk down the stairway until they reached a huge room with slightly larger spider webs covering the walls and ceiling. Remember, to be careful for the webs the spiders will shoot, Yuki, Alex be sure to watch above us and use your spells to protect the rest of us from web attacks. Eric said as he brought his shield up and moved to the center of the large room. Who you a a a a a a a Eric, used his war cry skill without warning knowing his party was ready. Spiders twice the size of the ones on the first floor came crawling out from webs and lowering themselves from the ceiling as the party got into formation. Yuki and Alex both used their magic to attack the spiders coming from the ceiling while Alice used her shadow zone spell to slow the movements of the spiders on the ground. While not as effective as the first floor her spell still slowed their movements giving the party just enough time to think before they acted. Suddenly five webs shot towards Eric and Josh while the two mages were preoccupied with the spiders trying to come from above. Seeing this Alice jumped behind Yumi and quickly charged up five fireballs and firing them at the webs destroying them and gaining the thanks of Josh and Eric I am happy I decided to let the two girls join the party, Eric thought to himself as he blocked the attacks of numerous spiders and used various different skills to counter attack them. After fighting for what felt like a hour the party started a small fire to take a breather after the room was cleared. Nice. Work everyone as long as we keep this up we should be able to finish the floor pretty quickly. The last floor only has one chamber before the boss room. Hopefully we can finish this today, once we let our MP recover a little we will move to the next area. Eric said as everyone continued to take a rest. Kiki Kiki. The party heard a monster quickly approaching them as they shot up into formation and prepared for more spiders. Crashing though part of the wall the spider queen slowly crawled out of the hole she made. Long creepy blade-like legs slowly pulled the queen's body out of the hole to show her smooth black exoskeleton with red stripes covering her body spider queen level 20 boss HP 50,000-50,000 MP 100,000-100,000 skills, web shot, poison bite, blade rush, call of the spider queen fuck it's the queen everyone be careful get behind me, Eric said as he used war cry getting the queen's attention. Blocking attack after attack from the queen, 
Eric called out asking for a buff causing Josh to give him a defense buff then jumping next to Eric to help tank the queen. Yuki not wanting to let the queen move from her position slowly raised both of her hands hands of Nainiji two large hands made from the cave reached up grabbing a hold of the queen causing her to lose control of four of her legs and not be able to move very well. Alex let out water blade one after another attacking the queen's eyes while Alice made one huge fireball and sent it flying at the queen's head. Sensing the danger the queen shot out a continuous string of web at the fireball coming at her slowly pushing the attack away from her at the cost of 15,000 MP. Breaking free of her cage the spider queen jumped back onto the wall and let out a cry. Kkeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Eric shouted as he continued to hold aggro. Going with the spider closest to Eric's side, the party attacked it together, bombarding it with spells and physical attacks, all at the same time overloading its aggro, causing it to swing one of its lets, hitting Alice in the ribs as she flew back a few feet, landing on hers. Reviving a heal, Alice regained all the HP she had just lost. Rushing to a new spider as the one who hit her fell down defeated the party kept the same attack pattern every now and then overloading the aggro and taking a massive blow. Getting down to the last spider guard they attacked from all sides of the spider not giving it a chance to defend they killed it almost instantly. Looting the items the five spiders dropped they gave Josh a chance to rest since he had to use a massive amount of MP to keep healing everyone during the fight that just took place. Finally entering the boss room the party was slightly nervous seeing the queen nowhere in sight. Looking around Yuki pointed up and used her earth spikes causing the queen to take another 1000 damage as it fell from the ceiling crashing to the floor. Kekiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiii
a young demon in full black armor said while taking a knee, Kale, you're one of my best men I have many tasks that need seeing to. My son may be a failure but he is still my only son, I will give him as many chances as I can to prove himself, if he fails then I can send another to try again. Lord Kira said sitting on his throne made from angel bones using the skull of the angel king to decorate the top of the throne. Yes, my lord, Kale said still bowing. Please give me a task so I may better serve you, I grow tired of doing nothing all the time. The young demon said wanting to please his liege. You can go to the kingdom of Rudham and investigate the mage, our source tells me that she came from that lowly kingdom. Lord Kira said waving off the demon dot walking through the hallways of his castle Lord Kira headed to his chambers to call Alistair. Waving his hand over the mirror he was met with the sight of Alistair posing in the mirror. Ahem, Alistair any news of my son's progress? He should only be a few days away now. Lord Kira asked choosing to ignore the embarrassing sight he just witnessed. Ah, yes, your son will arrive in three days time. I have sent my most trusted men to meet him along the way to ensure secrecy. Alistair said praying that Lord Kira would forget everything he saw, good, when he gets there I want you to make sure he is less of a failure when he returns to me, do anything you can for him, I will consider it a person favor, Lord Kira said before waving his hand over the mirror again. Walking out of the castle Kale was met to salutes from the guards standing by the castle entrance, Kale did Lord Kira finally give you a task, a elderly demon said while walking up to him, yes, I am to set out to the kingdom of Rudham to investigate a trimage. Kale said happy to finally have something to do, shall, this old man accompany you, it has been many years since I have had the pleasure of torturing a human, the man said with a smile, it is not like I could stop you from following me, do what you want father, Kale said shaking his father's hands underscore 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 queen level 20 boss hp 0 slash 50 comma 0 0 0 mp 0 slash 100 comma 0 0 0 we did it alex said giving josh a high five where is alice Yumi said looking around wanting to give Alice a hug and to celebrate. Looking around for Alice, Eric's face showed a grim expression as he pointed out Alice's body laying in a puddle of blood. Alice. Yumi screamed as she ran and slide beside Alice, Josh heal her hurry please. She continued to yell in a panic. Rushing to Alice's side Josh put his hands on her stomach and cast his high heel spell over and over again not wanting his new teammate to die. Heal damn it. Josh yelled pushing harder exhausting his MP trying every healing spell he had dot through all of Josh's attempts to heal Alice the only thing he managed to do was close her wounds. Ay ay is she dead? Yumi asked crying while holding Alice still dot walking over and checking her pulse Yuki brushed her hair out of her face as she met Yumi's eyes, her pulse is very weak, the only thing we can do is pray that she can recover enough blood to live, potions and healing magic cannot restore lost blood, and from the looks of it Alice lost a lot of blood. Yuki said with a sad expression master, you're not dead yet. Fight and come back to us. Little Shadow said as he licked Alice's cheek. We should carry her back to the kingdom, the royal mage might be able to do more to help her. We just need to hurry before it's too late. Josh said picking her limp body up and started walking back out of the cave. I will send an emergency message to my father with this scroll he gave me, I just hope he is in his study to see it. Yumi said as she set the scroll on fire after writing a report to her father underscore 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 on a book about the history of angels from his person collection Erida jumped up seeing a scroll land on his desk with a soft thud. Reading the message about the party his daughter joined with a smile his expression quickly changed as he read the rest of the scroll informing him of Alice's state right now. Get. Our fastest carriage right now? Meet me at the castle in 20 minutes. Erida said as he ran full speed out of the estate towards the castle. Running between stalls and crowds of people he made his way to the castle gates. Open up. I need to see a friend. He yelled out to the guards. Throwing his house's token at them he moved past the guards without waiting any longer. Reaching the royal mage's quarters Erida met with his old friend, Martin, I need a favor from you. I need you to come with me out of the castle to help heal my daughter's friend, I cannot explain everything just know that she is very important. Well hello to you as well old friend, is this so important you can't take a moment to have some tea with me? Martin questioned wondering why his friend is in such a rush to heal someone, in his experience he could heal almost any kind of injury a few minutes wouldn't mean too much. 
she is dying as we speak. I will buy you all the tea in the world and drink it with you later but I need you right now. Arida said standing his ground waiting for Martin to just give in. Sigh, fine let us go to this injured woman. You owe me this time though I just finished making some very good tea. Martin said grabbing his satchel and following Arida out of his home. Rushing to the gate the two old men got into the carriage and set off as quick as they could out of the kingdom towards the cave underscore 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 carrying Alice, Josh continued to try and heal Alice while Eric carried her, do you think she will live? Yumi asked quietly following behind everyone. I am sure that Alice will be fine Josh is using every ounce of MP he can to keep healing her to try to give her more time. Alex said walking beside her. The party kept walking as fast as they could only stopping when a monster would wander their way only to be brutally killed as soon as they got close enough for Yumi to attack them with her weapon. Try not to push yourself too hard Yumi, we still have a long way to walk. Eric said not able to meet Yumi's eyes since he was terrible with this kind of situation. But then again who was, meanwhile Alice was on the verge of death dreaming of her time as a child, dash dash Alice. It's time to eat. Her mother said looking at the sky above her home watching Alice fly around playing with the other kids around the kingdom. Okay mom I will come back in a minute. Alice yelled to her mom while flying further away with her best friend Tara. Won't your mom be mad if you stay any longer? Tara a silver winged angel with black hair and green eyes asked. Yeah I guess but I really want to see outside the kingdom walls don't you? Alice said dragging Tara with her. You know that we're not allowed to go that far, what if we get caught? Tara asked trying to persuade her friend not to do it. Don't be like that Tara. What is a guard going to do to two little girls? Most they will do it shoo us away. Alice replied knowing she made a good point. Ugh, fine. But just to peek and then we need to go back home okay? Tara pleaded duck grinning Alice flew faster towards the kingdom gates. Race you? Alice said letting go of Tara and flying faster knowing that Tara was very competitive. Not fair? Tara yelled out as she picked up the pace to try and pass Alice up dash slowly opening her eyes Alice was met with the sight of her party, Duke Astella, and a strange old man standing over her. You're alive? Yumi said hugging Alice crying into her shoulder not letting go. Yeah, I am alive thank you for saving me. Alice said gently hugging Yumi back, where are we did we finish the queen off? Alice asked remembering how she ended up in the state she is in. Yeah, we killed her, are you sure you're okay? Eric asked still looking worried. Yeah how long have I been asleep? Alice asked noticing it was dark outside. For a few hours, now that you're awake we can take the carriage back to the kingdom. Erida said helping Alice to stand while separating his daughter from her. 29 Drago. Laying in her bed Alice reflected on her lack of power and focus in battle. When she was a angel she didn't have these issues not that she went out adventuring. She was still recovering from the battle in the carriage when she received the notification that she had managed to level up twice. Name, Alice class, fallen demi-angel title, hunter HP, 535-535-560-560, MP, 580-580, 605-605, level, 1416STR, 5868-10VIT, 5070-5INT, 100 plus 5 dax, 40, plus 10 plus 5, def, 30 60, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10, agi, 50, plus 5 plus 10, skill points, 60 0 skills, familiar telepathy, blessed by god, passive, demonic gaze putting most of her free status points into her defense and vitality she felt much better than she did even before she was almost killed. This system really is amazing, I can build myself however I want. She said while petting little Shadow who was currently balled up on her stomach sleeping knock knock Alice looked over to see Yumi peeking in her room still looking sad, come in, you don't have to have that expression anymore I promise I am fine now, I was just really worried, Yumi said while sitting next to her. Alice had rested in her room for two days while recovering the blood she had lost. Eric and the rest of the party are waiting at the tavern for you, Josh almost injured himself continually drying up his mana to keep you alive. Yumi said hoping Alice felt good enough to go meet with the rest of the party. Then, I should go meet with them, Alice said standing up. Entering her room before the two could leave Arida gave Alice a warning, I just received word that the demon is only a few hours away, so stay away from the mages guild for a while. I am told that Alistair has something to do with his appearance. Thanks, I am just going to the tavern to let my team know I am back to full health. 
Alice said with a smile reassuring Erida that she would be okay. Taking Yumi's hand for once she headed out to the tavern to meet with the rest of her party. I am level 16 now by the way. Alice said with a smile, woohoo, I reached level 19. Yumi said with excitement. Arriving at the tavern Josh stood up as soon as he saw Alice come through the doors. Thank heavens you're alright. We all were worried when you slept for two days. He said while giving her a hug followed by the rest of their party. I am sorry to worry all of you. Alice replied somewhat happy, she hasn't felt like she's had friends in a long time. So, did you hear the rumor about the demon coming to the kingdom? Alex asked in a hushed voice. Yeah apparently he has some business at the mages guild, the last time a demon came it destroyed a few buildings because someone pissed it off. Yuki replied, do, you guys know what business he has to come all the way here? Alice asked curiously since the whole thing was still a mystery. Not a clue but he will be here really soon. We should all just head home and wait till he leaves. Eric said not wanting to be dragged into a conflict with a demon underscore 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 and finally I can see the kingdom. I wonder if the people are friendly. Drago said to himself while standing by a tree looking toward the kingdom walls. We should hurry young master said one of the escorts sent by Alistair. I guess you're right, I need to meet with the trimage my father told me about. Drago said getting back into the black carriage. Tell me more about this woman I am to meet and bring back to my father, Drago asked the escort. All I know is that she should be level 13, and uses shadow, fire, and the wind element. I have only seen her once and she is very beautiful. The escort said remembering all the information he had on the young lady. Maybe my father wants her as a concubine. Drago said shivering at the image of his father with someone his age. Sitting back in his seat Drago moved his short red hair back over his horns sticking out of his forehead. Won't be long now I guess. Drago said while enjoying the new scenery. Master. Drago, I have been waiting for your arrival I hope your travels went smoothly. Alistair said while giving a bow. Yes I enjoy the scenery in this kingdom, now where is the trimage? Drago asked while sitting in on of the chairs in Alistair's office. Her. Name is Alice. From the information I have she currently lives at the Astala estate, she was injured in a dungeon a few days ago. She is either at the estate or with the Astala's daughter, Yumi, I believe her name is. Alistair said while waving his hand over the mirror in his office. Lord. Kira, your son has arrived, Alistair said while bowing. Good, Drago I need you to do what you can to convince the Trimage to join our kingdom. If she refuses then you may try to take her by force. Lord Kira said before waving his hand over the mirror. Where is the Astala estate? I wish to finish my task as soon as possible. Drago said while standing ready to go. I must advise against going to the Astala estate Master Drago. The Duke is very influential in this kingdom. If you provoke him then then you may find yourself in a battle. While you're strong the Duke is still much stronger than the current you. Alistair said with warning. Fine. Then point me to the nearest tavern. If I can't go to the Astala's estate then I at least wish to have a drink. Drago replied. Heading towards the Adventures Guild, Drago ignored all the stares and whispers around him. His father had warned him that this would happen and it would be best not to provoke the kingdom without a good cause. Underscore 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 on the party started moving through the tavern to leave they paused. Seeing a young demon standing at 6'2 with red hair and long black horns protruding from his forehead he turned and looked at their party with deep yellow eyes. You there I am looking for a drink and information, your party should join me. Drago said to Alice and her party bluntly. Our friend here was injured a few days ago, we are on our way to take her back home after being stuck in bed for so long. Josh spoke out hoping the demon would let them pass. Raising an eyebrow Drago walked towards Josh who was holding on to Alice's shoulders. Injured you say? Could you be Alice? Keep in mind if you lie that I will find out. Drago said leaning down a little to meet Alice's eyes. Yes. I am Alice, can I help you? Alice said coldly. No need for the hostility I just wish to talk with you privately. Your friends can sit at a table further away to make sure I do not do anything if it makes you feel better. Drago said while pulling a chair from someone motioning for Alice to sit. Just. Sit over there guys, I should be okay. Alice said reluctantly sitting down and looking at Drago trying to see his level Drago level 32 shit, even if things go bad no one can help me. Alice thought to herself before saying, what business do you have with me? Alice asked as politely as she could. 
I guess it doesn't hurt to get right to the point. My father Lord Kira of the demon race has received word of you being one of the only tri-mages in the world. He has tasked me with talking with you about joining our kingdom as a royal mage. We would provide you with everything you could ever need to level and to become stronger, you would receive many other benefits that no other kingdom would be able to offer you. Drago said calmly, and, if I do not wish to join, Alice said expecting the worse, you should know that my father wants you no matter the cost. If you refuse me then another will come, your friends, family and the people you care for will all fall victim to my father and his desires. Drago said leaning back in his chair, why, does your father want me so bad? Alice said trying to find out everything she could. Having the shadow element already makes you desirable, but you also have the fire and wind elements making for a very lethal combination once trained. If you don't come back with me my father will see you as a threat and do everything he can to kill you, Drago said knowing that he had the upper hand. If I go with you then my friends will be safe? Alice asked not wanting her friends to suffer because of her. If you come with me then I can promise no harm will befall your friends, you will be treated as royalty and eventually obtain a high ranking. Drago said making things up as he went knowing he was only told to bring her back and nothing more. I want proof, if I have proof I will go. Alice said trying to hide her fear and sadness. Not expecting her reply Drago though for a bit before saying to her, fine I will get your proof but you and you alone must come with me to the mage's guild. Drago said knowing his father would probably agree. Walking over to her party's table Alice explained things to them and then told them to make sure that Yumi doesn't do anything stupid while she is at the guild. Let's go. Alice said walking past him to the mage's guild, glad to see that you're smart. Drago said as they both walked to the guild. Walking right into Alistair's office, Alice gave him a death glare using her demonic gaze skill to show him she was pissed. Call my father now, I have things to discuss with him. Drago said to Alistair. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience. Please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Waving his hand over the mirror, Alistair bowed before being pushed to the side by Drago. Hello, father, I have Alice the Trimage with me. She has her own terms which I have come to talk with you about. Drago said to his father, You have done what I have asked of you son, you and Alistair leave the room I wish to speak with her alone. Lord Kira said sternly dot bowing to him both Alistair and Drago left the room leaving Alice to face him, so you're the young mage I have heard so much about, it is nice to meet you. Lord Kira said being surprisingly polite. Yes, it is nice to meet you as well. Alice said using every ounce of control she had not to lose her temper. What are the conditions you have for coming to my kingdom? If they are within my ability I shall grant them. Lord Kira said hiding his surprise at how smoothly things were going. I will come to your kingdom if you swear on your life that my friends will never meet any harm by your kingdom or anyone hired by your kingdom. I also want to ask that you let me stay here with my friends for a year before I come to your kingdom as this is so sudden. Alice said wanting to buy time for herself. Sitting in a chair in front of the mirror Lord Kira thought about Alice's terms. As for your friends I will give my word to it. Concerning your request to stay for a year I do not wish to wait a year. Lord Kira said coldly seeing how he had plans for the young mage. 30 A chat with the demon king. We both know that everything would be much better for everyone if I went willingly and became a part of your kingdom of my free will rather than you sending countless people to chase someone they can't catch. I have lost everyone I love once already, if it happens again I am sure it won't hurt as bad as before. Alice said knowing she could at least run with her shadow element. I suppose you're correct, I will need a show of goodwill in order for me to accept. Lord Kira suggested. My show of good will is talking to you now rather than running and making you try to hunt me down. You might find me if I ran but then again my mana pool should already be known by you and it has increased so I am confident I could escape for many years before being caught. Spreading a small army of demons around the world will cause suspicion by all the kingdoms which wouldn't be good for you I imagine. Alice said glaring at Lord Kira. Ha 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 ha, good, I like you all the more now. I expect great things from you when you come to my kingdom in a year. Be warned though girl, I may be letting you have your way but if you cross me I will capture you and kill you in the worst was imaginable. Lord Kira said still smiling. Leaving the room Alice thought to herself I have already been killed in the worst way possible, next it will be your turn. Facing Drago she let him know about the conversation with his father and then left the building returning to the Astala estate only to be met with the sight of numerous royal guards standing guard in front of the estate entrance. Excuse me, may I go inside? I need to talk with Erida and Yumi, Alice said slightly shake as she came down from the adrenaline from a moment ago. No one is to enter the estate, move along woman, the guard said coldly, 
But, I live here how can you keep me from entering my own home? Alice said annoyed. I will send word inside, if you really do live here then you will be able to enter, wait here. The guard said before leaving the post to his partner and going inside. After a few moments of waiting both Yumi and her father rushed out of the front door, pushing her way past the guards Yumi jumped into Alice's arms. I was so worried what happened? When I told my father he was so furious he almost tried starting a war to get you back. Yumi said clinging to Alice. Come. Inside we have some things to discuss I imagine, Erita said letting her through the gates and walking her inside the estate. I talked with the demon races king, the demon who arrived here is his son. They do not know anything about me other than I am what they call a tri-mage, they want me to join their kingdom no matter the cost. I agreed to go in one year's time as long as they do not touch any person I care about, it is the only way I could ensure your safety. Alice said with a sad look. Yumi stood to argue but her father raised his hand the moment she did. If it is like that then I can assume they are prepared to take you by force. Thank you for looking out for my family but I can handle this without you selling yourself to the demons. Do you even have a plan to survive and continue your journey in the demon kingdom? Arita asked with a serious expression. That is why I demanded a year of staying here with my friends in return for going peacefully. I want to level up as much as possible in that year. After that then I plan to use the demons to get even stronger so I can learn the inner workings of their kingdom and maybe even gain allies. Alice said trying to think of a way to survive. Don't. Be stupid Alice. Do you think this will be so easy? Yumi protested. By no means do I think this will be easy but I have the weight of an entire race on my shoulders, what would you have me do? Run and leave you and your family to suffer in place of me. Alice shouted back. Take. It easy you too, Alice was not wrong in her choice. In fact being able to get the demon king to agree to her terms shows just how much they want her to join them, I wouldn't doubt the demons starting a war with this kingdom over Alice. Mages with Alice's level of potential can turn the tides of wars, the only reason this kingdom has not approached Alice is due to her living with me and being under my care. Arida said trying to calm his daughter down. Be sure not to waste any time of this year that you bought yourself, I will talk with the king of Samaria and try to get the king's help with anything you need to become stronger but the king will want things in return. Arida said again thinking of ways to help her. I will do whatever I can but I cannot go back on my word until I have the strength to stand up to the demons alone. Alice said clenching her fists. Fine. If you really will go willing to the demons then I am going with you and we will spend every day leveling up. Yumi said with a stubborn look in her eyes. I will have to go and talk to the demon king about that but even more than that your father must agree. Alice said hoping Arida would be against it. With both girls looking at him Arida's expression lifted a little, if that is what my daughter wants then I will not be against it as long as the demons promise not to harm her. Arida said causing Alice to get up and leave the room angrily. Storming into the mage's guild, Alice made her way into Alistair's office swinging the door open taking both Alistair and Drago by surprise. What can I do for you Alice? Drago said motioning for Alistair to stay seated. I need to talk to your father. Alice said coldly. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates. Better experience. Please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. All right, but I cannot imagine my father has already managed to make you this upset. Drago said, giving Alistair permission to call for his father. Waving his hand over the mirror, Alice was met with the sight of Lord Kira holding a set of stuffed angel wings. Seeing what he was holding, Alice could not help but release her demonic gaze, passively causing Lord Kira to raise an eyebrow. Drago and Alistair leave the room, if you disrupt me then neither of you will live to see tomorrow. He said causing the two to leave the room quickly. I don't know why you have called for me but I demand an explanation as to how you have the demonic gaze skill. Humans cannot obtain that skill no matter what method they use girl. Speak. Lord Kira said with a slight tone of authority. Not even thinking of the consequences Alice held back her rage as she said. My mother was a demon. I don't know anything of my parents other than the fact I can use demonic skills. My friend who is very dear to me won't agree to me going to your kingdom unless she is allowed to go, I am here to ask if that is okay. I do not mind, the only thing I care about is you joining me. Our agreement stands no matter if your friends are in that kingdom or mine. Lord Kira said thinking about the new information her learned about Alice. Young. Lady, can you describe your mother to me? If things are the way I am thinking then you may be more valuable to me than I first thought. Lord Kira asked sitting on his chair wondering if Alice was his lost wife's daughter. I told you I don't know much about my parents, all I remember of her is that she was beautiful and loved to wear a necklace she wore with everything. When I was still a child my mother disappeared and I never saw her again. 
Alice said remembering how beautiful her mother was and the necklace she would never take off. Contact me if you ever need anything, and I mean anything we will talk more of this later when you arrive, tell me son he is to return home at once. Lord Kira said waving his hand over the mirror and thinking to himself, is it possible she is my wife's daughter she always wore a necklace I gave her after conquering the angels. Alice does resemble her in a small way, I can't remember the last time my wife gave me that very look. With tears leaking from her eyes no longer able to hold back her rage Alice started destroying Alistair's office setting his books on fire and slicing his desk in half before calming down a little and letting Drago know what his father said. Returning to the estate with her eyes red and puffy Alice walked past Yumi and went to her room to spend some time alone. Do you want to talk about it? Shadow said gently crawling onto her lap. No, I just want to cry. I was forced to lie about my mother all because I couldn't control my emotions when I saw the Demon King holding a pair of stuffed angel wings. Alice replied burying her head in her pillow underscore 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 on having composed herself and taking the time to remember every detail about her parents while praying for forgiveness Alice made her way to the dining room in time for lunch. Nice of you to join us Miss Alice, a older man said sitting beside Erida. Allow me to introduce you Alice. This is the king of Samaria Mark, Erida said standing and pulling out a chair for her dot giving the king a bow before sitting down Mark began to talk, I have heard a lot about you Miss Alice, Erida has informed me of your situation with the demons. Mark said with a warm smile, it is nice to meet you King Mark, and yes unfortunately Alistair sold me out to the demons and I, Alice began speaking before being cut off by the king, I, have sent someone to deal with Alistair, he will be interrogated thoroughly by my best people. I cannot let a spy for demons live in my kingdom. After all he has just cost this kingdom a very promising young lady. I will help provide what I can for you to get stronger but in return I want you to send me any information the demons have regarding this kingdom when you arrive there in a year. On top of that I wish to form an alliance with you Miss Alice, if the demons go this far for you I would be a fool to not establish a good relationship with you. King Mark said signaling for the food to be brought in. Looking at the delirious looking feast being brought out Alice's mouth began to water a little as she ate and thought about what the king was offering. Of course I will send information if I can as long as it does not put my friends in any danger. As far as an alliance I don't want any harm to come to my friend's home so I will promise that I will do my best to prevent any harm from coming to your kingdom, Alice said drinking some wine. That is all I ask. I have prepared some weapons and armor sets from my personal collection to be brought over to help you in your adventures. King Mark said as he began to eat as well. I do not need any weapons, I only need to go on dungeon raids and supplies for my travels, Alice said while sitting back waiting for the, the maid to finish cutting the roasted pig. Then they shall be yours you merely need to put a request in with a royal guard. 31 Training at the Castle Waking up feeling anxious Alice made her way to the mage's guild to learn more about her elements and how to better use them in combat. Trying to quietly make her way out the front door Alice came face to face with one of the royal mages, Hello Miss Alice, my name is Jeffrey and I was instructed to wait for you to begin your training. He said with a smile. What? Happened to the mage's guild? Alice said curiously wondering why someone from the castle was here so early to train her. The guild has been deemed untrustworthy and the king is currently having a team investigate, for now I shall be training you. Like you I also have more than one element so the king thought it best that I be your instructor. Jeffrey said motioning Alice to follow him. Following her new instructor Alice tried asking him many questions about the guild and what the current status was only to be met with silence until he finally spoke out. Miss Alice I am sure you are aware that the kingdom has just found out of a demon spy so all matters regarding this are being kept under wrap. We can talk more about this when we reach the castle where there are no prying ears. He said hiding his annoyance. Walking though the stalls Alice once again stopped in front of the ring that caught her attention before. Jeffrey, the king said I could make requests for equipment if I thought it would help me is that correct? Alice said picking the ring up. That is correct. How much is the ring old man? Jeffrey asked the stall owner. The ring is rather useless but I am selling it for 300 silver. The stall owner said holding out a hand knowing the sale was made. Taking out a large pouch of gold and silver Jeffrey gave the man his money and continued the walk to the castle. If you want anything else I can give you a spending allowance later, you will just have to document what you purchase and turn it in at a later date. He said as they reached the castle and made their way to the training grounds where multiple guards were sparing. Seeing Alice and Jeffrey the other guards moved to the sideline wanting to see her capabilities, 
for today I will be having a mock battle with you so I can get a better feel for how to train you. You may start whenever you wish and use whatever weapon you have. Jeffrey said while holding a shield and a long staff. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. That's new, Alice thought trying to remember if she has ever seen a mage use a shield with a long staff. Pulling her scythe out Alice put some mana in changing the blade to a glowing red color while she used rift warp to close the distance. Seeing Alice starting Jeffrey moved his staff slightly causing a barrier made from ground in front of him to quickly raise up blocking Alice's attack while he jumped to the side striking Alice lightly in the ribs. Not a bad start but you will need to be quicker if you want to land a hit on me, he said while launching himself in the air. Looking up Alice lost sight of him due to the sun making her give a pout before sinking into the shadow cast by the barrier still standing narrowly avoiding a wind blade attack she was barely able to sense coming. Coming out of the shadows near one of the guards outside of the ring Alice watched as Jeffrey seemingly hovered in the air looking at her waiting for her to enter the ring again. Bastard if only I had my wings, she thought as she ran full speed at the barrier kicking off the top sending herself at Jeffrey. Moving to the side and swinging his shield to block her attack he almost instantly hit her in the stomach with the staff sending her flying back at the ground. Thinking quickly Alice used her rift warp and appeared above the shadow instantly sinking into it to avoid the fall damage. Thank god that worked or I would have been out for the count. Alice thought once again appearing by the guards only to hear them give applause to her quick thinking. That was very good. Your battle experience is above average and you are able to make very good use of your shadow element. However you greatly lack in defending yourself as well as knowledge in how to effectively use your other elements. Jeffrey said landing with a loud thud on the ground. Are all royal mages as good as you? Alice asked. No, most mages are only able to use one element, while being strong they don't have the variety of attack and defense that I do. It can be said that the more elements you have the stronger you can be. This is because while a fire element user has high destructive power they lack in defense, now if that fire element user also had let's say the earth element then he would be many times stronger due to being able to defend himself while also dealing out heavy attacks. For someone like you when it comes to a ground battle I am almost certain you would have put up much more of a fight because of your shadow, fire, and wind elements even if two of the three are at early beginner stages. Jeffrey said trying to teach Alice the difference in value between a single element user and a user like her. Now, let's say that you were level 50 and had a strong grasp on all of your elements, not only would you be virtually untouchable your attack power would be on a whole other level compared to mine. I hope you take this into thought, because the stronger someone like you gets the more of a threat you are to enemies. Jeffrey said while offering her a HP potion to recover from her wounds. I, see, thank you very much for helping me to understand that. With that being said though would it not make more sense to kill me rather than let me go to the demons? Alice asked ready to escape if she needed to. No, need to be on edge, while some royal advisors do in fact wish for that route the king is a smart man thus he formed an alliance with you, with you at the demon kingdom we will have plenty of warning if the demons plan to attack our kingdom which will greatly increase our odds of winning. Not to mention I do not think you would betray the kingdom that is home to your friends. It is indeed a risk but it is a risk that has the potential to pay off vastly, if you were to die due to our king's orders it would be the same as waging war on the demons seeing how they sent their prince to come and get you. He continued to say as he put his weapon and shield away. Now, that we have spared and had this insightful talk can you teach me more about the wind element, I would love to be able to fly honestly, Alice said not able to hide the excitement in her eyes. Yes, I will teach you more of the basics. I have heard from your other instructor that you are already able to sense the mana in the air which is a great start. Jeffrey said bringing a hand up and making the air in his hand swirl around rapidly forming a ball. This is your first assignment, much like you did at the Mages Guild I want you to control the mana and recreate what I am doing. Instead of controlling the mana around your body I want you to concentrate it to you hand and nothing more. He said while walking away with a wave. Letting out a sigh Alice sat down putting out her hand while closing her eyes. Sensing the flow of mana around her Alice tried to move it in her hand. Slowly making progress Alice opened her eyes to see a small ball of wind dissipate as soon as she opened them. Damn, Alice thought to herself while repeating it over and over while it dissipated every time she opened her eyes. Trying this time with her eyes open not wanting to miss it, Alice concentrated on the flow of mana and was surprised to see the ball of wind slowly take form in her hand. I did it? Alice yelled out happily. Not noticing Jeffrey sitting net to her he leaned over and blew the ball of wind causing the mana to be disrupted and dissipate again. Why did you do that? Alice asked upset. Don't. 
complain and do it again until you can move the ball without it falling apart like that. Don't even think about stopping. I have a supply of MP restoring stones with me so even if you run out I will get you filled back up to start again. He said laying back and juggling a few of the wind balls mockingly. No, need to show off, can't you be useful and you know instruct me? Alice said annoyed while quickly forming another wind ball and trying to move it only for it to fall apart again. Control your emotions Alice, you will never be anything more than a failure if you let your emotions get the best of you all the time. He said poking at her wanting to teach her she needed more than control of her mana to use the elements properly. Ignoring his attempts to provoke her Alice started to concentrate again this time forming a more solid wind ball and being able to move it with ease. Good job now throw it. Jeffrey said throwing his as well hitting a target. Alice gripped the ball which was surprisingly firm and threw it hitting the target as well. Good with this understanding of the wind element your wind attacks will be more solid and do more damage, now take your scythe out and try to use the wind element with it to preform a wind blade attack. All you need to do is control the mana letting it solidify and release as you swing. Jeffrey said giving a demonstration with his staff. Using her mana she controlled the flow of mana around the blade of the scythe causing a small vortex around her weapon. Stop. Do not rely of the ornament you have attached to your weapon Alice do it alone by yourself. He said not letting her take the easy route. Ugh, fine. Alice said while concentrating to control the mana around her blade and swinging her scythe causing a small gust of wind. Almost but remember how to properly control the mana and to solidify the attack otherwise the only thing you will do is knock your enemy back a little. He said while eating and apply enjoying his free time. Sending attack after attack at the target the only thing Alice was able to do was send wind out which was gradually getting stronger. Taking a deep breath Alice swung hard like she was actually attacking a monster and sent a wind blade crashing into the target cutting through it a little. Huh, you actually managed to cut the target that is quite good. Jeffrey said giving her a small applause. You have came pretty far today so we will end our training for now. I set the bag of money next to your belongings remember if you buy something you need to document it and turn it in. For now you're free to go meet with your party and go on an adventure. Meet me back here as soon as you get back and we will teach you the starting stages of using your wind element to hover off the ground. He said knowing that would make her come back in a good mood. 32 Ghoul Leader Taking her money and leaving the castle, Alice walked around the kingdom going from shop to shop looking for possible things she may need or want. While walking through the stalls buying some potions and better camping gear Alice ran into Eric. Hey Alice it is good to see that you're okay we have all been worried about you after the whole demon thing. What are you doing out here anyways? Eric said while putting away some of the items he had just purchased. I am fine now, currently I am buying more equipment and items for our next adventure, Alice said with a smile happy to see Eric again. That's great news, our next dungeon will happen in a few days if you want I can help you do some guild requests and level up. Eric offered wanting to help her out still feeling bad for Alice. I think I will go do some requests on my own to try and level. I need to push myself if I want to get stronger. Thank you though I really appreciate it. Alice said waving as she headed to the guild to see what requests she could pick up before heading to the estate to get little shadow. Walking into the guild, Alice noticed that the guild was pretty empty so she walked up the request board and started to read off the ones that are in her rank. Request, kill wild boar king and return with tusks request, collect five red serpent vines request, kill or capture bandit brothers, higher reward if captured alive. Request. Kill ghouls near Jocker's graveyard request, kill 10 kappa, green goblin-like creatures with webbed feet often found near the river, looking over the requests she could take Alice settled with taking the red serpent vines, killing the ghouls, and lastly capturing the brothers. With her requests processed and approved Alice headed back to the estate to pick little shadow up so they could both start leveling up more. Ready, to go have some fun Mr. House Cat? Alice said petting shadow who was sleeping on her bed comfortably. Yes. It is about time we headed out just the two of us again, Little Shadow said while hopping off the bed and following Alice as she closed her door after him. Leaving the kingdom gates Alice and Shadow started to run towards the forest to find the red serpent vines. Making their way slowly though the forest enjoying the summer weather the two would occasionally fight off the monsters that would make their way to them. Alice would work on using her wind blade attack to get some more practice that way she would have a easier time learning other wind element spells. Due to her high-end value she was able to deal quite a bit of damage with each attack. Getting deeper into the forest Alice looked around finally spotting red vines and carefully made her way to harvest them not knowing what kind of danger would be around them. 
Reaching her hand out to grab onto the vine closest to her Alice jumped back instantly as a red serpent blending in with the vines launched an attack at her. Sending a few wind blades at the serpent she managed to kill and cut down a few of the vines getting just enough to finish the request. Well that was relatively easy, Alice said to Shadow as she stored the vines away and took what materials she could from the serpent we should make our way to the cave site. We would just be wasting time on something so easy for now, Shadow pointed out as Alice brought out the request paper to find the location of the grave site. Request, kill ghouls near Jocker's graveyard. Jocker has been having issues with ghouls destroying grave headstones and digging up the graves, he requests an adventure come to his grave west of the kingdom to get rid of the monsters. Once the adventure has completed the request they should receive proper paperwork from Jocker to turn into the guild. Looks like we need to head to the west to get to the graveyard. Alice said as the two headed in that direction special timed quest level up to 17 within 2 hours reward. Failure, lose a random skill stopping as soon as she saw the quest window appear Alice couldn't help but be more fascinated with the system, it had been so long since she had actually gotten a quest from it and now the system wanted her to level up within 2 hours. To top it off the reward for the system quest was just a bunch of question marks. Even worse she would lose a skill if she failed to level up in 2 hours. Well. Looks like we need to hurry little Shadow, I have a time limit that I cannot afford to go over. Alice said while picking up her pace and running at full speed to the graveyard. Making good time Alice managed to reach Jocker's graveyard in 20 minutes time remaining 1 hour 39 minutes and 36 seconds I have just under a hour and 40 minutes to get this done let's get started. Go scout for the ghouls and tell me if you find me. I will go scout the other side and let you know if I find any of them. Alice said to Little Shadow as she ran to the left of the graveyard. It didn't take long before Alice was met with the sight of tall grey and smelly creatures eating some of the corpses they had drugged from some of the graves. Taking out her scythe Alice let out a few wind blades and followed up those attacks by using her scythe infused with the fire element to behead the ghouls almost instantly not giving them a chance to react. Unfortunately for Alice she had failed to realize there was a ghoul near a tree behind her. Feeling a sharp pain on her back Alice took a knee and sunk into the shadows while reappearing by a tree further away. Putting a hand on her lower back Alice felt a cut and blood covered her hand. Pulling out a HP potion from her inventory she quickly drank the bitter potion and launched herself at the ghoul sinking her blade in the ghoul's chest. Not able to pull the blade from its chest Alice put a hand up and launched a fireball at the face of the ghoul giving her time to infuse the shadow element into the scythe pulling it free. Recovering from the attack the ghoul ran at Alice swinging wildly. Dodging his attacks Alice infused the wind element into her scythe letting out a devastating attack causing the ghoul's head to fly off its shoulder deep into the forest. Not able to check her wound again little shadow called out for help while he was being chased down by four ghouls. Running as fast as she could to aid her familiar Alice jumped high into the air pushing herself further with help of the wind element she reached shadow quickly and landed on top of the shoulder of one of the ghouls putting both hands on his head she created fireballs causing the ghoul's head to heat up and explode. Moving to the next ghoul. Alice cut the legs off of the one right behind Shadow and swung her scythe in a wide circle around her body sending out a massive wind ring cutting the other ghouls deeply. Seeing that the ghouls were almost dead little Shadow took his opportunity and pounced from ghoul to ghoul using his devour skill finishing them off. There is still one more ghoul, he is much bigger than these guys and looks quite a bit stronger. Little Shadow said taking a moment to rest. We should go finish him off then I am on a time limit and I currently only have 45 minutes left before I fail the system quest, Alice said as she motioned for Little Shadow to hurry and show her the way. Following behind Little Shadow as they moved quickly in the direction that he saw the large ghoul the two stopped just short of a poorly made structure in the shape of an altar. The large ghoul should be close by Little Shadow said as the two of them cautiously looked around. Seeing Little Shadow land with a thud beside her she didn't have time to ask if he was alright before she sensed someone trying to attack her. Grabbing Little Shadow in her arms and launching herself forward rolling on the ground Alice quickly got back up in time to dodge another attack by the ghoul. Jumping into a tree Alice looked at the monster attacking her ghoul leader level 18 HP 10,000 slash 10,000 MP 100 slash 100 not having any more time to think she jumped up high as the ghoul used his tree trunk of a club to attack the spot she was just standing at. Infusing the fire element into her scythe Alice spun her body attempting to deal as much damage as she could only to have her attack blocked by the ghoul's weapon. Fuck. I don't have time to waste on you, just die? Alice yelled out as she used the shadow element to go right through the wood and stab into the ghoul's neck before jumping off of his body landing on the ground gracefully. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. 
Seeing that attack deal a quarter of his HP she decided to keep aiming at his neck to finish things as quickly as she could. Using her rift warp skill to get behind the monster and confuse it she turned her body and quickly used her wind blade to attack the back of the ghoul's neck dealing a large amount of damage again. As soon as she was about to attack again she noticed the ghoul status change ghoul leader level 18, enraged. HP 3,280-10,000 MP 0-100 letting out a loud yell the skin of the ghoul changed from a creepy grey to pitch black, letting out another wind blade Alice noticed her attack barely did 300 damage to the ghoul. Of course you would have to get stronger, Alice said changing from wind to fire and sinking her blade into the ghoul's back and yanking it loose. Letting out another yell the ghoul turned towards Alice and swung the club wildly at her destroying everything it hit. I would probably die if I got hit by that, Alice thought as she started launching fireballs from a distance landing a few hits and watching as the ghoul hit the others away with ease. Sinking into the shadow she came back out sitting on a tree limb and decided it was best to send her most lethal attack in hopes of killing it instantly. Raising both hands above her head five glowing red magic circles started to fuse together forming a red ball of fire that only got darker with the more mana she poured into the attack. Waiting until her mana was almost exhausted Alice yelled at the ghoul and launched her attack. Turning to face Alice the ghoul was met with the sight of a giant fireball inches away from his face before engulfing his body in flames. Sitting on the tree limb panting she watched as the ghoul struggled as his HP rapidly dropped until he was no longer moving and dropped to the ground with a loud boom time renaming 0,02,19 level up quest complete reward. Eye of God looking at her reward Alice couldn't help but wonder what in the world the Eye of God would give her ability wise, the quest was so sudden and didn't give her information. Looking over she saw Shadow sitting by a tree laying against it. Jumping down to be near him she checked to see it he was okay I am fine now no need to look so worried, little Shadow said while licking her hand. Good you still have to keep your promise. Alice said thankfully while bringing up her status window to check on her reward. 33 Bandit Brothers I am fine now, no need to look so worried, little Shadow said while licking her hand. Good, you still have to keep your promise? Alice said thankfully while bringing up her status window to check her reward. Name, Alice Glass, Fallen Demi Angel Title, Hunter HP, 580-580, 605-605, MP, 635-635, 660-660, Level, 17 STR, 6880-10 VIT. 70 78 plus 5 int, 100 110 plus 5 dax, 40, plus 10 plus 5, def, 60, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10, agi, 50, plus 5 plus 10, skill points, 30 18 skills, familiar telepathy, blessed by god, passive, demonic gaze, god's eye, passive, god's eye, with help from god's eye you become able to see the flow of others mana, any hidden, status effects, and spirits. Raising an eyebrow, Alice wondered if this would allow her to see the levels of people who are far beyond her level. What do you think it means by being able to see the flow of other people's mana? Alice asked, turning to see Little Shadow, surprised to see her answer. Looking at Little Shadow, she saw exactly what the description meant. She was clearly able to see what looked like lines inside of his body circulating like blood. No need to answer, I can see the mana flowing through your body, it is pretty weird to see. Your right eye has changed from purple to a bright golden color Alice. Little Shadow said staring at Alice. What? Really? Well in any case we should get the letter from Jocker so we can move on to the Bandit Brothers. Alice said standing up and making her way back to the graveyard where Jocker lived. Knocking on the door a elderly man hunched over using a cane answered the door asking how he could help Alice. Letting the man know that all the ghouls have been taken care of, Jocker wrote a letter and handed it to Alice giving her his thanks and walked with her to the end of his property. Time to go get the brothers? Alice said excited to be almost done for the day having already leveled up once. Request, kill or capture the bandit brothers. The two brothers Jack and Logan are no to attack lone adventures and merchants on the main road heading to the kingdom. Recently they took out a merchant who was delivering goods for a wealthy businessman in the kingdom. That man has offered a high reward for their heads. A bonus reward may be given if brought back to the man alive. Anything found during the request may be kept or sold. Sounds. Like fun, my aim does tend to sever monsters' heads from their bodies. Alice said putting the paper back in her inventory as she started running in the direction of the main road to the kingdom. How long do you think it will be until we find the brothers? Alice asked Shadow who was running beside her along the road. Hard to say, we might have better luck if we just keep running away from the kingdom and use the road to walk back. Little Shadow replied that taking his advice they traveled a few miles down the road and then stopped to catch their breath before heading back to the kingdom. 
I do say we managed to get far enough away from the kingdom, Alice said to Little Shadow getting a nod as a reply from him. Hey, girly, we have a nice bed you can rest on. Why don't you come back with us, it can be dangerous to travel alone you know, Jack said while laughing with his brother as they exited the edge of the forest. Now that you mention it I could use some rest, Alice said causing the two brothers to grin evilly. That's more like it haha, we will be sure to treat you really good, Logan said motioning for Alice to follow them. Alice what are you planning? Little Shadow asked concerned don't worry they don't have a very strong mana circulation I just want to know where they keep their stuff. Alice said to Shadow while inspecting the two men Logan level 17 Jack level 18 the two brothers looked similar, both having slicked back and greasy black hair and muscular builds using axes as their weapons. I don't think killing them will be much of a issue but I would like to capture them if I can which may be a lot harder. Alice said to Little Shadow thankful she had her shadow element to escape if they tried to touch her. Following them to their home Alice made the choice to talk with the men to lower their guards while asking them all kinds of questions making them believe she wanted to join them. Why would a pretty young lady like you want to be a bandit like the two of us? Jack questioned with a serious look. Well think about it, with my stature if I faked being injured on the side of the road who would question it? You and your brother would be able to sneak up and kill the merchants while I distracted their guards. Alice said with a convincing smile. She has a good point brother, Logan said to his brother. I guess you are right, but I think we need some proof of loyalty if you know what I mean little lady, Jack said casually wrapping his arm around Alice's waist grabbing her butt. Holding back her anger she felt her eye twitch a little before she used her shadow zone spell and diapering into the shadows. Appearing from the shadow behind their tent she took out her scythe leaving the two men to panic while searching for her. If you had not touched my you might have lived, Alice said coming out in view of the two men. Hey now little lady I didn't mean anything by it, why don't you be a good girl and come back to my side where you belong, Jack said with a mocking smirk. Taking the large axe from his waistband he motioned for her to come while his brother tried to sneak around her slowly. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. You barely have any mana and you think you stand a chance little man? Alice said while catching her scythe on fire sure it would cause the man to fear her a little. I see you have a sense of humor, that's good you will need it for later tonight, Jack said blowing her a kiss before trying to run at her only to notice he was moving much slower than he wanted. Going from fire to wind, Alice sent a wind blade flying at him knowing he couldn't dodge the attack. Taking his axe he swung the it hard hitting the wind blade causing the attack to fail catching her off guard. You will have to do better than that. He said signaling for his brother to attack. Swinging his axe at her Alice jumped up trying to dodge only to get cut on her exposed leg. Using Rift Warp Alice put some space between her and the two men, before limping and taking out a HP potion and drinking it. Think we should kill her and use her brother or should we break her arms and let her feel everything? Logan asked his brother with a smile knowing they could easily overpower the beauty before them. Leave. Her Alice of course I like it when they struggle. Jack said laughing and charging at Alice again getting used to being slower than normal. Launching fireballs at the two men she started to panic a little when she saw their axes could break through her spells. Jumping back again landing on a tree limb Alice began making a larger fireball and launching it at Logan wondering just how much they could counter her attacks. Swinging his axe and cutting the fireball in half she was happy to see that the attack still hit him and caused a burn even though he sliced her spell in half. Ack, you bitch, get down here and surrender or I really will kill you. Logan called out in anger from taking damage. Like hell I would do that? Alice retorted before sending three more fireballs at him watching as he cut through the first two and getting hit square in the chest by the third. Seeing her opportunity she used Rift Warp again closing the distance before he could recover and swinging her scythe at his neck decapitating him. Seeing his brother drop dead to the ground Jack let out a loud yell before breaking free of her shadow zone by sheer will and charged at her as fast as he could. Dot being taken back by his ability to break free from her zone spell Alice quickly sank into the shadows barely dodging his swing knowing if she is hit that it is game over. If you surrender and let me bring you to the kingdom alive I promise you will get to see your bastard brother buried before you get sent to prison or die. Alice said mocking Jack. Little shadow sneak up and attack his legs to slow him down. Alice instructed Little Shadow who was hiding behind the now dead Logan. Rift warping to get Jack to face away from Little Shadow, Alice taunted him again about his brother sending him into a rage as he ran at her again. Taking his chance Little Shadow ran up behind Jack and used Devour to take a large chunk out of Jack's calf. Falling to the ground and rolling in the middle of his charge due to missing a chunk of his leg Alice slowly walked up to the man and kicked him hard in the chin knocking him out. Good work Shadow, 
search the camp for anything of value while I tie him up. Alice said while taking some rope she had purchased out of her inventory. I wonder if I still get paid extra for only bringing one back alive? Alice thought to herself while tying Jack up making sure he couldn't move. Walking over to Logan's head she picked it up and put it in a sack and stored it while putting the two men's weapons in her inventory to auction off since they could cut through magical attacks. Alice, come inside the tent they have quite a lot of money and other things you may be interested in. Little Shadow said looking at a small chest full of silver. Entering the tent her eyes widened seeing what had to be a few thousand silver coins as well as some crates of crafting materials. Good find. Alice said while storing all the silver and materials away. I wonder how I am supposed to carry that guy back to the kingdom, Alice said while looking towards Little Shadow. Don't look at me I cannot carry that much weight, Little Shadow said not even wanting to try dragging the guy. Slowly dragging the bound and knocked out Jack, Alice made her way to the main road and started to slowly drag him to the kingdom wishing she had brought a horse or carriage for this part. After about two hours of dragging the jack who had woken up and made things more difficult they were finally able to see the kingdom gates in the distance. Happy to see the sight of the kingdom gates, Alice didn't notice a merchant wagon approaching behind her. Halt! One of the guards with the merchant wagon yelled out to Alice finding the sight very suspicious. You have to help me this crazy bitch attacked me and killed my brother. Jack yelled out hoping they would help to free him. Kicking him in the jaw again Alice turned to face the guard before handing him the request flyer. I just captured this brother and killed the other, the two of them were bandits who made an enemy of a businessman in the kingdom. Alice said bluntly annoyed with Jack and the fact she had to drag him so far. Ha 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 ha, you killed Logan and captured his brother Jack? My boss will be overjoyed, Joey load the tied up man into the back of the wagon. Young miss would you like to sit beside me for the rest of the trip? I can take you right to my boss to collect your reward? The merchant asked with a big smile.